Welcome to the Destiny of Manufacturing podcast, powered by the Precision Metal Forming Association. I'm your host, Dean Phillips, and with me today, I have Brad Coven, the editor from Metal Forming Magazine. Brad, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dean. Good to see you. Great to be here. Great to have you here. Well, I hear we have some exciting news to talk about. We have a new podcast to, to discuss. Yeah, we do. We are excited. Uh, as equally excited as you are to to add your uh, your Destiny of Manufacturing podcast to the PMA and, and Metal Forming Magazine websites and looking forward to, what are we going to do, almost on a monthly basis, uh, interviewing Couple of industry months. leaders. And yeah, looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Yeah. yeah, this should be great. Tell us what else is going on new with uh, the uh, Metal Forming Magazine and and what's been going on with PMA recently. Well, with metal forming, there's there's plenty new and in, in the media business, nothing stays the same for very long anymore. So yeah, we still have the regular magazine and, and it's thriving and, and doing well. But uh, you know, the, our audience these days is looking for, for uh, information in a whole new way in addition to, and we don't say instead of, we say in addition to print because we know that our audience still still appreciates the print publication. They request it. When we try to convert them over to digital, they say we want our magazine. But um, they do want information in different ways. Podcast is certainly one of them. Um, but uh, starting last year, we we launched something called MF Live, which is a, a series of broadcasts. They're really kind of meet the press style um, format with a uh, a panel of experts on a particular subject. Um, and we broadcast those from PMA headquarters where we've got a nice new state-of-the-art um, production environment, uh, great lighting, and we bring in a professional uh, video crew and sound crew. And, and uh, we interview and, and discuss for, for 90 minutes some, some important topics uh, of relevance to the metal forming community. So we did that last year, and we'll do that again this year in July with a series of three, but then we're expanding that and coming up at the end of April uh, we'll have MF Live on the shop floor, we're calling it. So it's the same concept with a panel discussion, but instead of just um, talking heads discussing uh, technical issues uh, live on the shop floor, we'll focus on two, in, in this instance, two uh, use cases of automation in, in uh, production metal forming uh, operations. So we've got two companies that have agreed to uh, let us provide some, some video footage of their automation. Uh, on their plant floor and we'll have their leadership um, uh, present with us in Cleveland to discuss the automation applications, but then maybe even more importantly to talk about their overall strategy and, and plans for for continuing to add automation to their to their operations. Uh, so we're looking forward to that and that's probably what's what's re really new with Metal Forming Magazine, again, in addition to the podcast. And, Again, we'll continue to look for ways to bring new media, you know, whether it's video or, um, you know, these, these broadcasts that we're doing, uh, webinars, what have you. So, yeah, it's exciting stuff. That's fantastic. What have you heard back from uh, readers? And I say readers, but I shouldn't probably say it. Uh, co media consumers, I, I guess, as a, a better definition. Sure. Uh, have they been more interested in seeing more videos uh, uh, and especially on social media and things like that, where we can talk about and try and reach a bigger audience. Because one of the challenges I think we have is how do we reach, we, we, everybody says the same thing. We have to get younger in our industry. How do we go about doing that though, especially from the standpoint of uh, the media platforms that we currently use? Well, yeah, you're right on with that. And, um, you know, we all know that there are still plenty of, uh, of folks, you know, our age in in the industry who who like print and consume print, um, but uh, we know from just our own uh, measurables on our on our on our website and and our social media outlets, um, video is king, right? So, the the most popular web pages, for example, uh, on our website and probably on most others in our business to business media, are are video. Uh, video links. So we're trying to you know, provide as much video, whether we produce it or link out to somebody else's YouTube, for example. Um, we know that's what people want. They, 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 
those are definitely the, the most clicks that we get are, are on videos and we're, we're expecting that the same will happen with the podcasts uh, as, as we continue to launch more and more of them. Um, and who knows what comes after that, but you know, I, we, 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 we've been trying to add video to our articles when we can um, for years. And uh, you know, I, I always used to say if, if a picture, you know, tells a, what is it? A hundred words, you know, a video is thousands of words. So people want to see it in action, which is why we're excited, honestly, to, to do the MF live on the, on the shop floor. So we can show, you know, video, we can talk about robots, for example, tending presses, um, or, you know, a robotic cell tending a, a series of, of operations, you know, in a cellular format. It's great to talk about it and, and we can show pictures, but to actually show it running, uh, especially with something like automation, uh, uh, I think is yeah, is really what the younger audience will appreciate, and they'll be able to learn from that. And that's, I guess, that's ultimately the bottom line: is it's the best way to learn. And uh, you and I can talk about things, but to actually show something on on a video is really how people are going to learn. I I agree, and I think adding this element of the video even to the uh, Destiny of Manufacturing podcast, adding a video element certainly. Uh, grabs people's attention. And it adds an element. If you're a consumer of a podcast by strictly listening, you listen in your car, you listen at uh, while you're working out, whatever it is, that's fantastic. But there may be an element there that can go more in depth, like talking about things like servo presses. There's probably things there that by adding an element of video, or as you mentioned, automation, no question that all of a sudden it clicks for people. Oh, now I see what they were talking about. Now I can see where this adds more value for me. Right. So I, I think you're absolutely right. I think that that's an, an opportunity for us to really grow and reach more people, uh, yeah, both within the platform and outside of it. So people that are listening may go over to the video and watch it now uh, on YouTube or on the uh uh, through metal form ed uh, through metal forming magazine you know so right, there's right. more so opportunities that, yeah so i have a question for you then is when you're doing these uh video podcasts i don't know do you call them vlogs or I, i'm not sure what the terminology some is. people say vlogs some people yeah. say video podcast i, I think yeah. video podcast has gotten to be a more that's a terminology. prevalent thing it's the okay. term of the, the day so when, during one of one of these events or, or uh, broadcasts, will you be able, I'm sure you would be able to, let's say we were talking about servo presses and, and uh, your guest wanted to talk about, you know, being able to, to slow the uh, ram at the bottom of the stroke and, you know, speed it up at the, on the, on the up stroke. Um, you would be able to show a video of that, right? So, so hearing somebody explain that is one thing, but to actually see, uh, you know, a press ram slow and dwell maybe even at the bottom is uh, that's a pretty powerful tool uh, to add to a to add to a podcast. A absolutely. And, and we could do it as simply as I'm doing it right now where you're talking to me and there's a little picture of me on here. But uh -huh. there is the ability to, of course, add a video element like this, this, this has a video element to it. It's not specifically video, but it can be, I can add yeah. videos into this and it gives a new element to it. So now it's not just you and me side by side, whoever speaking can also take control and, and add a new element to describing what's actually taking place. Yeah. It, no, it, that would be huge. That would be huge. So when we, when we enlist uh, subjects to to be guests of your podcast we can ask them if they want to send you know a short video to complement what they're going to be talking about that's that's fantastic yeah and of course logos are always welcome too we can do more things you can of course do a backdrop like you have uh, but there's also ways as as i have control over here i can certainly add an element of just by simply adding a different video to the feed that I can, I can add for any of the, uh, the people that want to participate in that way. Yeah, that's neat. Very cool. 
So I really appreciate you stopping by today, Brad. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. Uh, this is just kind of an intro to let everybody know what's coming. Get ready, because it's <laughs> going to be very different from what we've done in the past. Yeah, so it and tell, it's going to be a lot of fun. Lot and of fun. tell everybody how they can get in touch with you, Brad. Well, you can certainly email me at, at dcoven at pma.org. Um, or uh, 216-901-8800. Give us a call. Great. Look forward Thank to you so much. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thanks, Dean.